Welcome back to the mini project. Um, interior is stripped now, got the seats out. In the last episode, episode 3, I mentioned about the mounting of these seats. Uh, hopefully, you can see down below here what I've done. I've got a pair of off the shelf side mounts. I've made my own brackets. I'm just going to show you that for those are, who are planning to mount this type of seat into classic shape mini. So, I'll just bring the camera around and show you. So, here we are. We've got the two. Uh, metal side brackets, these are steel brackets um, in retrospect I wish they were a bit lighter these are about, I think they're 1.2 kilograms each or 2.4 kilograms plus what I've added which basically is the weight of the seat itself the seat itself is about 3 kilograms and then underneath I've got a bit of angle So just a bit of angle, I'll probably drill a few holes in this just to lighten it. And if I just turn the seat around, as you can see there's a small step in here. So all I had to do is put a bit of a uh, small packer in, again a bit of angle, just to ensure this area here is now flat to take the base here. So that all lines up. Also stiffens this low point. Adds okay, the, the job for this afternoon is to get the front end on or completely uh, fitted. I have trial fitted the front end quite a few times now, uh, working off the floor with the weight, weight on wheels. Um, I've got a couple of steps to complete, and that's just the front fasteners to the subframe. Uh, but what I will do uh, is show you the sort of process to go through to get a good, uh, good fit, good secure fit as well, and that will include the bonnet. As you can probably see, I've already got the radiator in place, I've got the washer bottle in place, header tank, and this. Uh, matrix here is a heater matrix from the uh, Micra K11 so I'm just using that as an extra piece of cooling uh, so I'll just show you on the passenger side what I've done in terms of brace bars okay so just around the uh, near side um, brace bars was one each side of these um, I've got these from a company called Archangels I'll put a link in the description they supply the front end as well but I have modified them originally you were meant to bolt through these two holes this one's got a rib nut in at the moment I'll show you a bit about that in a sec. But this hole and this hole originally were designed to be bolted straight to the inner wing. I've changed that, I didn't particularly like the design. Um, I thought it would just cross the tube when you tighten the bolts up, so I've put a spreader plate with three M8 bolts to spread the load there. Uh, the connection at the front, which I'll show you in a second, uh, I've maintained uh, the same basic setup there, I haven't really changed anything. And then the rib nut, if you only know what that's for, that's just to hold this clamp here. Uh, I'll just put the screw back in, just as a temporary fit, uh, in there, and that's a little bracket I made, an aluminium bracket, just to hold the inner wheel arch. And the inner wheel arch, I'll just pan around a little bit, just to show you that, the inner wheel arch here, I got that off a Mercedes C-Class, so just, yeah, a radiator, I've got the radiator in, in situ here. I've um, got an electric fan mount here, I think it's a 12 inch fan, uh, the radiator is a Fletcher radiator, uh, it mounts on the subframe mount below here, uh, so it does move with the engine, as the engine moves the radiator moves, and both uh, are essentially tied together, so there's no risk hopefully of any cracks appearing in the... So this is the front end that I've got from Archangels, it was originally just in gel coat in white, I flattened it down quite early on and got some high build primer on it, this uh, green primer. Um, I have done a bit of filling on it to get a better fit on the bonnet and I'll show you how that's done. Um, a couple of tools you will need um, in getting this to fit reasonably well. Uh, that's a little carbide uh, cutting tool, I'll just give you a close up of that. Um, quite a useful tool that, just using a hand drill. Just cutting glass fibre, just get clearance around things and a standard sort of flap wheel, um, sort of use a 40, 60 grit, whatever is suitable uh, and get yourself a small lightweight drill if you've not got one uh, just a small pistol drill um, so yeah, this has been trial fitted, I have got a little modification to do to it I'll just show you the effectiveness of these tools, I'll just set the camera up again so this is an area I just want to just trim back here, just, as, uh, just shade it in black so you can see it a bit more clearly I'm using the uh, uh, tip tool I just showed you 
Uh, if you're doing a lot of this, it's probably very advisable to wear a dusk mask, to be fair. This is a very small job. I want to talk to the camera and so say I've not got one on at the moment, but um, just, uh, just cut it away. Just cut fairly easily. And once you've got it near the line, just finish off with the flat wheels, get it nice and smooth. So that's that area now prepared. Just need a little bit of clearance around the gearbox mount just in here. Uh, the other thing you may be able to see um, just here is a series of rib nuts uh, around the perimeter of the grill. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier than using nuts and bolts. Um, rib nuts, if you're not familiar, I'll just show you an example of a, a large one here. Uh, that's probably about an M10 by the looks of it. Uh, you use a swaging tool and just pop them in a suitably sized hole squash them and that then gets fixed into the panel so it's very easy just to screw the grill up into one of the things i forgot to mention when i was around the side of the car was that you'll have to fix uh, these little tabs i've put two tabs in my case uh just here just to receive the uh the front end i've got metal a panels welded on they're all in good condition they're new new panels so the first thing you need to do is make sure this area is quite sound um, these are just made from a little bit of uh, cut down box section. Uh, they've all got rib nuts in uh, ready, but I'll come on to the uh, procedure in a second what you should be doing first. So I'll just get the front end on and show you it clamped in place. So the first step is to get your clamps in position here. Uh, two each side should be enough. Um, the next job then is to trim around the scuttle area here. That's quite a slow process. Again, use the tools I showed you. The, sort of carbide tipped um, cutting tool and a, and a flap disc as well but just patiently just cut this back here to get the right sort of curve as it were it's about, if I remember right, the, the uh, Archangel's front which this was, is about half an inch oversized it just sort of swoops up gives you some idea where you need to cut back to once you've done that and you're fairly happy with the fit around the scuttle and you've got the alignment where you need it to be the tabs which are inside of here, I'd pre-drill them with holes. What you can do then, once you've got everything fairly well where you want it to be, is you can mark the holes from the rear side, just with a pencil mark, and then you can drill a pilot through, and then draw, drill your main hole through here. And what I'm going to do on this particular front, is I've got some quite nice uh, sort of aluminium anodized uh, hex bolts to fit in, just to hold the front at this particular point here. But one thing, a couple of things I forgot to mention. Uh, first of all, you should, when you're fitting the front end, is make sure your subframe is quite solidly mounted. It's recommended to use poly, poly bodies, which I've used, uh, and or very, very good solid uh, original sort of spec mounts. But if you've got soft mounts, you will get too much flexing in the subframe and it will affect the fitting of the front. So you need to do that on firm ground, as I mentioned at the beginning. The other thing I've got to mention was the alternator. Um, I've got the 1.4 micro engine in here. I'm not sure what make the alternator was, but it was quite a lot bigger than this one. This is a Denso one off a Daihatsu one litre van. Uh, that's like a high jet, I think they're called. Okay, the next step, once you've got your uh, lines, both sides of the scuttle panel is, is nice and even gap here and you're happy with it. The next step then is to attach it to the remains of the inner wing here. Now this flange here, this uh, flange, I had to trim down, it was actually too wide to fit in the gap here in this particular case, so I had to take about probably about 5mm off uh, off its width in this area here, so I've got a narrow strip I then drilled some pilot holes through, got everything aligned and then originally I used a nut and bolt to attach this area here uh, through to the remains of the uh, old inner wing What I've since done, which makes life a lot easier is I've put rib nuts in here in the inner wing area so I can just put an allen bolt straight in to secure it so that's how the top is fastened, same the other side um, I also, just also in this area, welded a gusset in here into the um, bulkhead area ready to take some bonnet pins um, for the fiberglass front uh, front bonnet so we're just looking at the driver's side um, driver's side front here so the idea is to get this uh, location hole fitted into the subframe. On this side it is actually quite okay. 
I can put a piece of M8 or M10 stud into the subframe and the subframe just sh should just slip over it and secure it in place uh, with a dome nut, so not a problem on this side. The other side is a slightly different story. On this side, when I try and put my uh, punch through, as you can see by the angle um, of this punch, the two holes start to align. So what I'm going to do is I have an M8 bolt, put it in there, actually an M10 bolt, and I've just put a bit of blue tech on the top of it, on the on the head of it. That will go into the subframe in a second, uh, that'll be secured in place. And then what I'll do then is put the punch through this hole and then it will just leave an imprint of the blue tack and I'll see the offset uh, between this hole and the other hole and then I'll be able to weld another bolt back to back to that with an offset and then that will effectively act as my stud. I've just got the bolts set up in this uh, machine vise here so that they are hopefully in a straight line. Uh, I've got a reasonable amount of uh, material to weld to here. Uh, and also having it in the machine vise will stop the uh, the bolts sort of moving uh, when I get a bit of heat in there. There we go, one offset bolt just welded together, just cleaned up a bit. And that's ready to fit, so hopefully that will give us the offset we need. Okay, that's the uh, the offset bolt in position. Um, in practice, I'll probably cut this bolt down a little tiny bit. Once I know the exact length, and put a dome uh, nut on the top of that, just stop any stop any sharp edges sticking out. And then between the fiberglass and the bolt itself, I'll probably put a little bit of rubber tubing like that, um, just act as a bit of a cushion, something to tighten up against. Okay, once you've got your front end on and all secured. Uh, it's mounted as you want it and align well around the scuffle area. The last thing to do is get the bonnet fit. Now that's again it's a Archangel's uh, bonnet. Um, glass fibre, like with glass fibre. Um, I would like to use four bonnet pins, just one in each corner. It's it's fine as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it does the job. There are prettier solutions, uh, the air catches. I just I bought some of those. I just thought they were just too bulky looking for the sock size of car. So we're back to stainless steel bonnet pins. One thing I found on this particular fit, again it may vary uh, depending on the car and how you fitted the front end and so on. But the panel gaps here did start to splay out. I didn't pretend like that. I wanted it nice and even and a bit of a better fit. So one technique. Um, you can use to uh, improve the fit, I'll get the fit as I've got here, is to get a little packer, I use a bit of angle line, which slotted in the gap. But bear in mind the gap originally was much wider than this, instead of being about three or four mil I've got, it was probably about seven or eight at the top end here, tapering down to about three at the front. I use a bit of angle, a bit longer than this, slotted into the gap, and then backfilled up to the aluminium itself. Allow it to go off, take the aluminium out, take the bonnet off and then just sand uh, the shape back to get the contour at the top here. And uh, that's the result. I just saw the end of the video, just showing you the grill in place. As you can see here, I've got some little uh, nylon spacer tubes here. Just take the grill about half an inch, 15mm off the front panel. It just gives a little bit of clearance to the alternator, which is really tight. In fact, I had to cut a bit off the grill, just to the, one of the little webs, just to give it a bit of extra clearance. So I'll just drop the bonnet back on. Okay, that's the front end on, essentially, but a few fasteners to put in, but that is it, that is uh, fitted. Uh, I'm putting some rubber seals underneath the bonnet here, just to get some push on down to. That'll be a bit of a, a finishing piece. Um, the grill around the sides is a small gap that you can see, but with the trim, the, 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 the little hockey sticks on, that will probably go unnoticed, hopefully. Um, but what I wanted to create, a fairly standard looking front, nothing too uh, extreme as it were. I think with this front it's just sort of uh, worked out quite well. So that's it for now, I'll see you on the next.